Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Troy and today we're building the Mazda MX-5 Miata as our next rally car. Welcome back to the channel guys and another week in Forza Horizon 5. Today we're going to be building the Mazda MX-5 as our next rally car. Um, I have checked that we can actually get this thing into S1 class. We can with an engine swap. Of course it is a small little Japanese rear wheel drive sports car. It was never designed for off-roading um, but we've taken the likes of the DeLorean and the Ferrari 430 we've had a lamborghini huracan a few episodes ago so we like to build unusual cars for this series and i'm curious to see how this compares to some of our other rear wheel drive vehicles the fastest rear wheel drive vehicle we have so far is the ferrari 430 in 19th place with a 215 and right behind that the delorean dmc 12 so let's see how this thing goes with some off-roading. Um, it's probably going to be quite uncontrollable. The two-wheel drive vehicles in this series are not the easiest to handle, but that's how it goes. If you haven't seen any of these episodes before, all the vehicles must keep their stock drivetrain. Um, if the PI allows it, then they keep their stock engine. The Miata does need a little bit of assistance in that department. We can swap this thing to all-wheel drive, but we're not going to. There is also a Rocket Bunny kit that we could apply to this thing, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to leave this thing how it is. Uh, we could go ahead and put some body kits on this thing, uh, but we want as much ground clearance as possible. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and apply any of those. We're just going to leave this thing standard. Uh, now, all the vehicles will be running the off-road tyre compound, formerly known as the rally tyre compound. If you played Forza Horizon 4, I'm not sure what it was called in Horizon 3. I imagine the same. Uh, we're going to increase the track width just a little bit. Just to push those tyres out, give us a little bit more stability when we're off-road. Because this thing is quite short. Now, short little vehicles off-roading, especially when they're rear-wheel drive, are usually quite difficult to handle. When you're off-roading, you want something long, because that will give you stability. Uh, and I'm not talking about a limo, that's a little bit too long, but something like a Dodge Charger... Um, is very good for off-roading because it is quite a long vehicle. The Mazda is a short, stubby little vehicle, so I imagine it's going to be quite a handful, but we'll see when we get out there. It may surprise me. Some of the vehicles in this series have surprised me in the past. We're going to go for the Rally Differential. We'll put the best brakes on that we can apply. I'm going for off-road springs and dampers. I'm not going to go with anti-roll bars. Um, we're going to go for as much weight reduction as possible. So we start off at 2,200 pounds, so near enough a ton. Um, and we go down to about three quarters of a ton. So that is very good. We're reducing quite a bit of weight there. Um, now, sometimes weight reduction in this series isn't a good thing. Because a weight pushes the tyres into the ground, it gives you more traction. And especially with the two-wheel drive vehicles, that is very welcoming. Um, but there we go, we're up into S1 class. Um, we have 469 horsepower. We can go ahead and upgrade the turbo. Of course, we can fit the turbo with anti-lag. That bumps us up to 668. So almost 200 horsepower extra with the anti-lag turbo. This, uh, this series was started before anti-lag was introduced. So we're not allowed to apply that. And I want to keep the horsepower down on this, which sounds very unusual. But as I keep saying, this thing is two-wheel drive. So we want sort of as much grip as possible. We don't want to spin the tyres up too much. Um, it is very lightweight, as you've seen. It doesn't even weigh a tonne. 
So if we go and slap 700 horsepower in this thing, rear wheel drive, it's going to just spin the tires up. So we're going to leave the stock turbo. We've got nearly 470 horsepower. That isn't a small amount in something that weighs this light. So there we go. That is the build. I'm going to go ahead and tune the vehicle. I'm going to paint the vehicle. And then we'll see how we get on. Okay, our first attempt in the Mazda MX-5. This thing is spinning the tyres up quite a bit already. It'll be interesting to see how this thing handles the dirt. The suspension is very, very soft. I may have to stiffen that up. Let's get early on the brakes. The nice thing is, because this thing is rear-wheel drive, we can use that to rotate the vehicle nicely through the corners. It isn't as uncontrolled as I thought it could be. We've got that 787 inspired livery, since this thing is a Mazda. I thought that'd be quite fitting. I'm only using about half throttle, because I have no doubt it will just spin the tires up anything above that. This corner through here, we get the car sideways. I'm having to have a little lift off because it was going to spin round. And I think that is going to be a, a real concern with this vehicle is actually spinning the thing out. Like I said, it is very short and short off-road rear wheel drive vehicles can be quite difficult to handle. Coming into the hairpin, we, whoa, that is exactly what I'm talking about there. That's going to cost us a whole bunch of time. That's okay. We've got two more bites of the cherry to see how we can do in the little MX-5 here. I'm not sure whether this is going to be our fastest rear-wheel drive vehicle, but I'm hoping it's going to be up there. If this thing beat a Ferrari, that would be quite amusing, I have to admit. Right, cresting the hill at 90 miles an hour. That's not terrible, but I'm still only using about half the available power. Let's put my foot down and see actually what happens. We get through that corner beautifully in the trees. The thing is just sideways continuously. Of course, it is a very well-known drift car, the MX-5. Having to have a little lift off there just to counter steer the oversteer coming down the hill I'm using all the available throttle it is just spinning up those tyres and we cross the line at a 225.946 that is going to put this thing way way down the leaderboard in a 28th place it's our second slowest vehicle um, just above the rear wheel drive Ford Crown Victoria so, yes, I would like to see this thing higher up the leaderboard. We've got the GT70 and the Lancia 037 at a 218. Um, that would be a tall order to beat those two vehicles, both rally-bred vehicles. The MX-5 was not really designed for this sort of thing, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement there. Alrighty then, here we go. For our second attempt in the MX-5, I'm going to knock it straight up into second. Try and negate some of that wheel spin. It's much better on the tarmac here, but it's already wanting to go sideways, and we've not even hit the dirt yet. We almost jump over the water splash. Gonna break early for this first corner here. Try not to spin the wheels. That is the trick with the little MX-5. Keep to the right-hand side of that water splash. That didn't really go as planned. We keep to the right hand side over here. Just a little bit through the trees there. That wasn't quite as far as I was hoping to go. We're on the grass a bunch there. We don't get any airtime on the jump because we are just squirreling around in this thing. I'm trying to keep it high geared to try and stop the wheel spin, but of course that slows you down because you have less acceleration. Now through this section here, we're on the grass again, we're out wide, that's going to cost us time. This part last time we were a little bit bumpy, I'm just going to have a little lift off there. 
just to help us around the hairpin. Right, we don't want to get this thing all crossed up this time. We don't, but we're a little bit wide on the exit of the hairpin. Just accelerate nice and gently down the straight. We don't get any air on the jump. Let's see if we can improve our top speed going up the hill this time. It's really struggling for grip going up the hill. There we go, that's 100 miles an hour, but we're out wide. And we just clipped the checkpoint. That was a very, very lucky checkpoint there. That almost void our second run. That is going to cost us a lot of time, but will it be an improvement on our last run? I hope so. It gets through that corner very, very well. A lot of cars struggle with that one, especially the front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive vehicles. They get a heap of understeer. This thing has so much oversteer, it's ridiculous. All right, here we go. I'm just going to boot it down the hill, try and get some momentum going. It's definitely an improvement over our last run, but only by a couple of seconds. But it, that is going to move this thing up a few places on our leaderboard. A 222.593 is going to put this thing in 25th place above the AMC Gremlin, just behind the also rear-wheel drive Volkswagen Beetle. So let's see if we can actually beat the Beetle. That did a 220. So we'd have to shave off another two seconds. But if I can keep this thing in a straight line, if I can get the power down to the ground, I think we've got a good shot at beating that Volkswagen. All right, here we go for our final attempt. Let's keep it nice and neat on the tarmac. We don't get any sideways action this time. We can be absolutely flat on the throttle down this section, but then we brake early. We're still a little bit wide on the entry there. Gonna try and keep this thing in fourth gear. That's where it seems to be most happy. Right, this is much better through this section, but is it slower? That is the question. You've got to use less throttle to keep it smoother, and smoother can be faster, but sometimes you just have to go balls out and get the vehicle down the course as fast as you can. So we'll see if smoothness does pay off this time. We're going to try and use a bit of the throttle this time. I'm going to counter steer as much as possible. Get it up into fifth gear. We're much, much more controlled on this run. Curse of the commentator will inevitably come back and bite me in the ass. Let's get rotated through the hairpin there. Straight up into fourth gear. It's definitely a little bit faster down the straight this time. This is a huge improvement, I think, over our last run. Right, we were struggling a bit for speed up the uh, hill last time. We didn't miss the checkpoint in this run. We crest at 100 miles an hour. That's not terrible. Let's have a little lift on the top of the hill. Just so we don't oversteer into the fence. Right, now the Mazda handles this corner very well. A little bit of sideways action gets us rotated nicely through there. We're definitely faster through this section. I'm having to have a little lift off just to stop us sliding though. And now here we go, the final corner. And the run down the hill to the finish line. Let's see what we can do. We cross the line sideways at a 220.8. Seven four. Um, let's have a little look there. That is not quite enough to beat the Volkswagen Beetle. We're three tenths of a second slower than that vehicle. Um, so it is going to stay in 25th place just above the AMC Gremlin. But uh, a very, very smooth run there. Our last run we picked up almost two seconds um, just through being nice and smooth. I think with a, f a few more runs, this thing could certainly climb the leaderboard even further. But there we go, the Mazda MX-5. 
a 220.874. Let's go to the leaderboard, see how it racks up against some of our other rear-wheel drive vehicles and some of our other leaderboard vehicles. Well, there we have it. It's a 26th place for the Mazda MX-5. A 220.874 is going to put this thing just in front of the AMC Gremlin and the also rear-wheel drive Pontiac Firebird. And just behind the Volkswagen Beetle, that had a 220.541. So only three tenths of a second slower than the Volkswagen Beetle, but a very good showing from the MX-5. I knew it wasn't going to be one of our fastest vehicles. Um, it is a little Japanese sports car. It is rear-wheel drive. It was never designed for this sort of thing. And as we've seen there, all the two-wheel drive vehicles, the front-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive, are lower down the leaderboard. But this thing has put on a very good show. It is not our slowest two-wheel drive vehicle. Um, and it is by far not the worst handling vehicle we've had. Yes, it was a little bit oversteer happy. But when you learn to control that, it was actually very competent. If I was building this thing for online racing, then of course I would fit it with all-wheel drive. It would be much, much better with all-wheel drive because that would just negate some of that oversteer but it looks absolutely fantastic with this 787 inspired livery um i do like the mx5 the pop-up headlights are cool and there we go if you did enjoy this video then don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any latest episodes of the Forza horizon 5 rally series it will be back next saturday at 7 p.m with a new vehicle so join us then but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.